You order some nostalgia? No? Well, I'm giving you some anyway. One thing I love is digging into mostly forgotten and or somewhat forgotten cartoons from my childhood and to an extent, possibly yours. Whether it be fairly known or so dang obscure, you question if I'm talking about a real show that even existed at all. Kind of like the night demons I pretend aren't staring at me when I try to sleep. So time travel with me a moment as we go back, back 21 years to be specific. Ah, the year 2000, a year of Destiny's Child and questionable red carpet fashion and the overwhelming sense of relief that the world didn't end with Y2K. Y2K! But more importantly, a year of great television. With a year so heavily bogged down with iconic shows, it can be easy to forget the other, just as well crafted, but perhaps not as universally beloved shows that premiered during this same time. Shows like Pelswick. If you don't remember Pelswick, it's really not your fault. With its 26 episode run from 2000 to 2002, it's been off the air for just shy of two decades. For those who do remember it though, the show's kid-friendly tone on adult subjects, wry sense of humor, and inclusion of a protagonist Protagonist who is in a wheelchair are probably the elements that still stick with you. Pelswick, more formally styled as John Callahan's Pelswick, was a Canadian-Taiwanese animated kids show created and produced by Canadian production company Nelvana, but aired by Nickelodeon. The show was based on the newspaper comic of the same name by cartoonist John Callahan. The show, just like in its newspaper counterpart, follows around 13-year-old Pelswick Eggert as he navigates early adolescence from his wheelchair with the help of his two best friends, tech-savvy ace and good-hearted but slow-witted goon. Oh, and one more thing, Pelswick has a guardian angel only he can see who gives him long-winded, vague advice at various points throughout the episodes, and whose reasoning for existing is never explained or addressed. Nevertheless, there he is, in all of his knockoff mall Santa glory. A main focus and point for both the show and the original comic is that Pelswick lives a normal teenage life, dealing with popularity, crushes, and the local town bully just like everyone else at his school. Because of this, while him being in a wheelchair was occasionally a plot element, it was very rarely the main focus of the episode. And in the cases where Pelswick's disability was a major focus, such as in an early episode where his school forbade him from going on an 8th grade camping trip in fear of his safety, the moral of the plot was never how the societally perceived limitations of his disability made it so he had to be coddled and overly sheltered. Instead, it was always how, while yes, some additional consideration and compromise was necessary from those around him, Pelswick was still just a normal kid with a normal life capable of experiencing and participating in all the normal highs and lows that come with being 13. Just so you know, Pelswick will be back in a jiffy. No more delay. Pelswick's back to play. The origin of Pelswick and his story stem from creator John Callahan's own personal life story. At the age of 21, Callahan was involved in a car crash that left him a quadriplegic, a condition that is medically defined as someone who is affected with partial or complete paralysis of all four limbs and the torso. Over the next six years, through physical therapy, Callahan managed to regain partial control of his arms and upper torso, eventually making it possible for him to grip and control a pencil with both hands, which is how he drew his over two and a half decades worth of comics. From 19 1983 to his death in 2010, Callahan's cartoons appeared in his hometown newspaper, the Portland Willamette Weekly, where they dealt with traditionally taboo subjects such as disabilities and disease. A fact that occasionally resulted in readers boycotting and protesting the paper, criticizing Callahan's comics as politically incorrect. Despite this backlash, Callahan never stopped writing his comics. The only reaction he ever cared about in response to his work was the reaction from his disabled readership. My only compass for whether I've gone too far is the reaction I get from people in wheelchairs or with hooks for hands. Like me, they are fed up with people who presume to speak for the disabled. All the pity and the patronizing. He wanted to create something that his community could look at and see a reflection of themselves in, without all of the superficial input from those who could never fully understand their life experiences. He pulled from his own life and from others in his community for a lot of his work, not just Pelswick but in other projects too, such as John Callahan's Quad, another newspaper comic of his turned TV show that also featured a protagonist in a wheelchair. But unlike Pelswick, Quad was adapted for Adult Swim and thus kept a lot of the dark humor Callahan had originally written. Dark humor that the Pelswick developers found best to tone down with their television adaptation since the target audience was kids. When the Pelswick TV show ended, it was less canceled and more quietly phased out due to low viewership. An easy feat to achieve by the network with its episodic plot style 
meant that there were no overwhelming questions or plot holes to wrap up. The reason for the low viewership and audience engagement during its airing has been speculated since the show's ending nearly 20 years ago, with the unconventional art style being cited as a possible reason. Or the fact that the show took, creatively, a lot of risks at once, including being seemingly based in reality, yet with random fantasy elements that made it difficult for some audience members to view it as one or the other and having mature humor about a range of political and adult issues, while being aimed at kids made it hard for any one age demographic to connect with. For whatever reason Nickelodeon had, when they phased out Pelswick, they phased it out completely, going so far as to pull back on having any sort of claim on the show, despite the fact that during its run it was included in the official Nicktoon lineup. The reason why Nickelodeon did this was answered in a response to a 2016 YouTube comment that asked the Nickelodeon YouTube channel to upload Pelswick's intro in celebration of Nickelodeon's 25th anniversary, a request that Nickelodeon responded with, No, it's not a Nickelodeon Animation Studio production, so we don't own the rights to it, and it's not a part of our 25 years celebration. Which basically means that since Pelswick was produced by Nelvana versus in-house at Nickelodeon Studios, Nickelodeon didn't retain any rights to the show after its cancellation on their network. Nicktoons is used more for branding and promotion than to indicate which shows are by Nick Animation. So anything we've aired could be considered an official Nicktoon, even though many of them are not created or produced at Nick Animation. Notice there's no difference in the way The Loud House and Alvin and the Chipmunks are branded on air right now, even though we make The Loud House and Alvin is an acquisition. This would also explain why Pelswick wasn't included in any of Nick's other nostalgic promotional events over the years and why the show stopped appearing on Nick even as reruns after its cancellation. Whether you remember John Callahan's Pelswick or not, read the original comics or didn't, loved it or hated it, there is no way to deny that it was an undertold story that did its best to push against the assumptions about people with disabilities that society has a tendency of falling into, while offering up a perspective view that some people may never have been privy to before. The show was unique in its time in every way, both in protagonist and concept, but also in art style, humor, and origin. It strove to achieve what John Callahan always wanted Pelswick to do, and it did so with heart and humor. Watching through the series again as an adult really put a nice perspective of what it was trying to achieve and say, and through this, pouring out John's personal struggle, grievances, and experiences. Especially for the time, the show took a necessary risk in bringing something that not every person or kid watching could relate to, but was pertinent in understanding and seeing this perspective. I loved what the message of the show was saying, as well as the art in which it was portrayed. Having it come from the lens, or rather more the pencil of John Callahan. In 2018, the film Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot, directed by Gus Van Sant, was based upon the memoir of the same name written by John. John in the film was played by Joaquin Phoenix, and it didn't shy away from the grittier details about who John was and how his accident happened, as well as everything in between to him working on his newspaper cartoons. While John was not born with his eventual disability, and it coming from the result of a very stupid decision from him drinking and his other drunk friend driving him, he used his work to showcase those without proper representation, free from pity and being patronized. Thanks so much for checking out this video, as well as a huge thank you to my friend, voice actor Barrett Letty. You may know him from his work on the Pokemon anime, Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, and much, much more. Make sure to hit like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later. One thing I can do.